What happens when the season is over? Success and failure. When there's no trophies to win. No rivals to defeat. No crowd to cheer you on. What do you do when it's just you? Your sharpest critic. Your biggest fan. Your greatest opponent. And you find the competition never really ended. It's only just begun. Most visionaries are not good at executing. Yep. So they need somebody to run and take their um, decisions and put them into action. That's actually way, way more valuable than the ideas because ideas are nothing. They're pixie dust. They're imaginary. They're, um, they're, they just float around in the universe. And until you grab one and put it into action, it does literally nothing. And it might actually do more harm than good because it shows up in the form of a distraction. So what this person needs is what we call is an integrator. Mm -hmm. Think of it as a CEO. It's a person that actually runs the day to day and takes these ideas and puts them into execution. This is so common in entrepreneurial businesses. There is the person with all the great ideas. This is the role I play. I am the yep. ideas guy. I have, I, I, I'm pretty confident I have an idea how to change the world. Yep. Um, you ask me to put that into day-to-day -day action and I get so frustrated. I hate that part of it. We are here because we know the outcomes in our lives are within our control. That taking absolute ownership of how we eat, sleep, train, think, and connect with each other is how we'll optimize our health and happiness. That chasing excellence is how we grab hold of what is possible. Our mission is to live on the run, always chasing, never stop. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Excellence. How are you, Ben? I'm good. Thanks, Patrick. We are doing our two-minute drill today. I think this is the 20, I think, I don't think, I know it is. It's the 22nd time we've done this. Whoa, <laughs> so we've been doing I never would have guessed that. Yeah. Holy smokes. It's a lot of questions we've answered. Um, and for folks who are new, Two Minute Drill <laughs> is when uh, our listeners send me excellent questions um, and then I present them to you with the challenge of answering them within two minutes. And today we are going to take this seriously. We are going to try yes. to keep you to two minutes. Usually we don't. Yes. All right. And, um, and there is no try, do or do not. That's Walk right. Walk left side road, okay. Walk <laughs> right side road, okay. Walk middle, squish, just like grip. I don't know what that is. <laughs> really? Karate yeah, Kid, Mr. Miyagi? Oh, okay. There yeah, is no well, try, like, do or do not. Or maybe that's yeah. Yoda. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm I confusing. Think, yeah. I think that was Yoda, yeah. We're okay. already failing on this two-minute drill. Already failing. Two minute, not a, not a two-minute intro. Okay, ready? Let's First go. question, how, how can I get my 12 year old son to understand the concept, power and impact that mindset can have in every aspect of his life? He has the worst mindset a person could have. He's a terrible loser, no confidence in himself. And he's always making excuses about his performance, blaming everything but himself. I've tried to talk to him, but needless to say, he doesn't respond well to feedback in general, but especially when it's coming from mom. Do you think it's his age? Do you think that mindset is a genetic personality trait? Now that I'm thinking oh about taking God, it seriously, a two minute Jesus. question. <laughs> Any suggestions on how to encourage him to adopt the mindset principles that will allow him to achieve the great potential that I know he has? Save this mother. Okay. Holy crap. Okay, mom. Mom, <laughs> I love the question. This should not be a two minute. This should be a whole episode. Okay, <laughs> so challenge to do this under two minutes. I'm already wasting 10 of those seconds. Um, <laughs> Stop focusing on your son and focus on yourself. Mm. Is it something that's just inherently born? Uh, yes, it is, but not all of it. Most people are born with certain character traits. The other ones are, it's nature and nurture. Most of it comes from you. Most of the self-talk that we develop as adults, that inner critic that we have in our heads comes from the way our parents started talking to us in infancy and all the way up. So I'm, mom, I'm not blaming you, but what I would do is do exactly what you're asking your son to do, which is you take ownership. And I get it. You're saying like, no matter what I do, I'm doing all these things. Doesn't matter. Try to realize that it's these tiny little ways that we talk to our, so really simple. 
is whenever he says something, you're just going to reframe it back to him in, a, in the way that you would want him speaking to himself. He goes, I just can't do this. He said, you just can't do this yet, really softly. And you move on and you're done. And that's how, and just drip, drip, drip over time, that nurture thing starts to take hold. Mm. And it's not going to happen today, tomorrow, or next week. But the goal is over the next decade, you're going to change it. Yeah. And I would also add, celebrate the heck out of every tiny victory you can find. He yeah, says right. something yeah. that's that's got that the the right mindset. Celebrate the heck out of it when you yep. when you celebrate something, you elevate it, and so every opportunity you can. Oh, like that, you celebrate, you elevate it. Mom, don't have your kid read it. You read it. Mindset by um, yeah. is it Carol Dweck. Carol Dweck. Yep. Yeah. Great. Next question. I have become very unmotivated in the past year. Most of my struggles relate to my current employer. I've been doing the same exact job for three years and worked in the same organization for seven. I would like to do something else, but I don't think I'll be able to find a job that pays the same around me and my wife is unwilling to move. Any un any advice on how I could figure things out? Okay, in under two minutes. First one is really take the deep dive and ask yourself, are you really unfulfilled with your job? Or has the last year and the struggles we are all facing the last year exaggerated something that maybe might not be your job, but is something that you're feeling otherwise? This is happening across the everywhere. It's happening in my organization. We, people used to get a lot of fulfillment from walking the halls and talking with their yeah. friends, and that's gone. And now that it's not there, they're actually saying, like, it's my job that – and maybe, maybe not. And the grass may not be greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. So all I'm saying is pay attention to can you cultivate the grass on this side of the fence. Okay. Now, if you truly decide that that is, um, that is your job – um, there was other questions there, which I'm, I'm going to try to remember if I hit them or not. So yeah, it was um, mostly like, is, I, I think that, but I think the key point there was, well, I think I got Patrick is, yep. um, I don't think, I think you said, help me out here, Patrick. I don't think that I can get another job that pays as well. Is that correct? Yep. Pays, pays as okay. well in my area and my wife yep. is unwilling. So, to move. so what you need to do is stop thinking and go explore and find out. Yeah. So like that's this, this ambiguity of like, I don't think I can find it. Go and search. And don't do it halfway, go all the way. So you can be confident in knowing the answer to that. That mm -hmm. is going to be hugely important because if you do that really deep, hard research and you find that there is other opportunities, well, you just, you just answered it. Yep. I mean, you can go and change and do it. But until you don't know that, it's not about going to the wife. It's not about going to your boss. It's answering that first question first. Yeah. Love that. Next question. Was wondering if you and Ben had any advice, uh, any advice on transitioning from corporate job into my own business within the same profession. I feel like I've lost my passion and don't uh, get to utilize my creativity anymore. Is it better to just quit and start from scratch or gain some clients, customers before? What is the best way to handle bosses, et cetera, et cetera? Okay. I love how they take this really nice, good, easy two minute question. And there's like always like this three, four, five yeah, points. Afterwards. 14 questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Okay, I think that the first point here is to bring awareness to the what we just alluded to, which is this unfulfillment, this lack of purpose, lack of motivation could be driven from um, living our lives in quarantine and semi-isolation and losing mm -hmm. this thing that we had before. So that's the first question I would, I would ask yourself and spend some time with it. The next one is um, – should you quit and jump full speed or um, build clientele? I would suggest the building clientele. Yep. Um, work it as a side hustle first. And through the side hustle, you might find out that you're not even that passionate about this thing. So you kind of dip your toes in a little bit. And that might sound weird from somebody like me that's like go all in all yeah. the time. But you're but you with your wife, this is like mitigating risk. This was the wife question, not the one before, correct? No, the one before was the wife question. Okay. Regardless, uh, mitigate your risk, especially you know if you um, if you can't take that leap. Um, I think that building the side hustle um, nights and weekends is the way to do that. Let's say that you um, are working for somebody else in a, a, a personal training studio. You want to open your own personal training studio, like um, that can be sketchy. And I understand why they're asking about the, the bosses, etc. The other thing is I would be ultimately transparent and let them know what's going on. If you feel weird about it, it's weird and it's, you feel weird because your gut is telling you you're not doing something right. So just do the hard thing and be like, hey, boss, I just want to let you know I'm considering opening up my own studio at some point. What are your thoughts on that? And throw it back in their court and let them direct it. If they're like, well, if that's the case, 
Um, let me know as soon as you can. And that's your two weeks notice. Then, mm-hmm. okay, you have a lot more clarity on what that looks like. If they go like, hey, no problem. As long as you do it 10 miles away from here, I have no issue with that whatsoever. Okay, a lot of clarity on that. So just don't get away from the ambiguity and the weirdness and the the thing that's kind of like uh, the gut feeling that's messing things up and um, get have the hard conversation. Dig it. About my I'm dad just talking oh, really fast now. You are talking faster than usual, but but it is also I think working. So I, I'm I'm okay. <laughs> I'm hesitant to <laughs> to complain. Don't listen to this on one and a half speed. <laughs> I bought my dad a whoop for his birthday, along with a 12 month membership. His job is taxing. His sleep schedule could be better, and it would help to track his workouts. But he's only worn it once and hasn't touched it since, and gets mad whenever the topic is brought up or when he sees me wearing mine. How do I get him to wear and listen to it without attacking him or aggravating him? Okay, cool question. Um, this is probably not going to be the answer that they're thinking that I'm going to give. Mm. Um, Human beings want to feel like they're in control. Mm -hmm. And when you are saying you need to do this and you need to do this and you should do this and you should do this, they are no longer in control. You are. Um, As long as someone feels that way, they're not going to follow along. Um, If they're not following along, it's because they don't – it's either that or they don't trust you. It's your Mm -hmm. dad, so I'm guessing your dad trusts you. So my guess is that it's this scenario where dad doesn't want kid telling him what to do and they feel resentment about that. And to show control, they're not going to wear this thing. And no matter how much you say this matters, it's going to be your health. It's gonna... All of a sudden what's happening is it is the, the amygdala part of the brain, the feeling part of the brain that like I need to be in control. I'm being attacked. No matter how much logic prefrontal cortex comes after that, it doesn't matter. You're not going to get past it. Uh, strangely enough, what you need to do is back off mm. completely, 100%. Um, and when you back off completely 100%, maybe they come around, maybe they don't. But you're not going to get what you want by pounding them into the dirt. Take it. What are your most important factors and principles to scale an online business like ComTrain? Oh, that's a good question. In two minutes. Uh, what you've been, yeah. what you've been working on for how ten did, years? How did you build your business, <laughs> and what's your plans going forward? <laughs> um, okay, principles is um, first and foremost the way you start any business, whether you're going to scale or not, and that's create um, the right team through t- trust and culture, then the right shared vision for what you're trying to accomplish, and then um, create standards of execution. That's the way you build a business. Um, it's not just through about creating a lesson plan and that I mean, a lesson plan. That's a Freudian slip of me being a coach, <laughs> a business plan. Um, it is about you having a lot of conversations to make sure everyone's on the same page with all of those things. You can't scale until that's dialed in with your very small group. So the way to scale is to not scale. Yeah, You get it dialed in first. You get everyone so on the same page of what this thing looks like now and what you're trying to accomplish in the short term to accomplish the long term. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you do the same thing with your customers and you focus on Joe in Idaho, not to 10,000 users outside your market space. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's such a great point because when you think about CompTrain, you didn't start by thinking, how can I get... I'm going to make up a number of right. 50,000 people following this program. You thought, how can I get the seven athletes in my gym to be more competitive? And then you exactly. practiced and it worked and it worked and you got better and you got better. And as you got better, not worrying about scale, more people started to pay yeah. attention. Right. And then yeah. you started thinking about scale. Exactly right. Um, small businesses don't die of starvation. They die of indigestion. They <laughs> drive trying to take on. They, they die of trying to take on too much, yep. not from um, focusing on just the little littles. Yeah. Get it, get it right first and then figure out how to scale it from there. Right. Too many people think, right. how do I build something? How do they try to do the same thing, at, or both at the same time, which is really hard. How do I build this programming for um, 300,000 users? Yeah. yeah that's, that's not the right approach. What is, uh, oh no, skip one. What resources do you recommend for a teenager to begin learning about strength training? My nephew wants to start lifting and I would like to give him a good book that isn't too complex, but will offer a quality foundation for a young athlete. Yeah, cool. I love it. Good job. 
uncle or aunt. Um, <laughs> I would not give them a book. I'm not going to give any teenager mm. a book, you know, especially I, I would give them Instagram handles to follow. Yep. Um, and ones that you feel like, so like, I'll just give, let's just start here. This is a, this is a short answer. Follow, have, tell them to follow Catalyst Athletics. Mm. We're done. Yep. <laughs> Love it. I actually just had, I just actually recommended a book to uh, my cousin who is probably 18, 19. Um, I recommended, um, I don't know if you ever read it, The Naked Warrior by Pavel Satsui. It's an old mm. book. He's like a kettlebell Satsumi guy. Or something like that, right? Yeah, I probably pronounced it poorly. But, yeah. um, but I remember reading that. Right? Yeah, I remember reading that when I first started CrossFit. And it's a lot about, it's all body weight movement. It's a lot about um, greasing the groove. But actually, I think that's... Yeah. Ooh, Again, I, this is um, this was about weightlift. This question was about weightlifting, though. Correct? Yeah, it was about weightlifting. But I, okay. but yeah, yeah, for yeah. a teenager, I I think strength training. Or it was about strength training. Technically, he wanted to start lifting. But um, I think I think getting a, a solid base of of body weight strength was probably a better idea for for teens. Yeah. All right. Next question. What's your opinion on hypertrophy training incorporated with CrossFit training? I think it's great. Yeah. Done. <laughs> Love it. So I I, I do. No, I, think it's, I think it's great. Like what what's like uh, what's hypertrophy training incorporated with crossfit yes. training is great. Yep. Hypertrophy training for the sake of hypertrophy training is great for ego and aesthetics. Um, possibly good because muscle mass is correlated with increased longevity in life. But that's just about. I don't think that's necessarily about having, you know. Um, being 270 pounds and 4% body fat. I think that those studies come from, um, you know, the, the difference of being 205 pounds at 25% body fat or 10% body fat. Um, so having said that, I love it. I think, I think CrossFit should be the, the basis for all strength and conditioning mm. programs. I mean all, whether you are a marathon runner, um, a kayaker, um, or do archery or triathlons or any of one sport that's more conducive, you know, lacrosse, baseball, basketball, yep. rugby, football. Um, it should be the foundation for all of those sports. And then, yeah, then you supplement it with the other cool stuff. If you're a runner, it's some extra running. If you want to look at it on the beach, it's hypertrophy. Mm. I choose hypertrophy. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Is a little extra fat gain normal when trying to put on muscle weight? Or does that mean you're just eating too much? Nope. It is. It's completely normal. Um, and go for it. Um, the key word there is a little mm. that's yes. If you, um, if you put on a little bit of extra weight and a little bit extra muscle, uh, fat, meaning like a percentage or two on a, a body fat. Yep. That's, that's the easier way to do it. Um, that is the easier way to gain muscle. Got it. I follow CompTrain, but wanted to get more into weightlifting since I know I should build uh, I should build it up since I'm young. Last year, I worked with a former Olympic coach and really nailed down my Olympic weightlifting form. I know awesome. being young and knowing my body, I should work on my more quote unquote basic lifts and get heavier yep. on squats and deadlifts. I like to follow specific programs for every day, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to program or where to start. I know Ben has recommended the conjugate method. I've tried, but I like a day-to-day -day programming so I can be accountable. Should I look for a coach or is there a great program out there that wouldn't put me in, uh, that wouldn't have me overdoing it alongside comp train programming? So there's a couple of things that are youth, yep. um, getting stronger, but also doing comp train. Okay. Um, so should you find a coach or a program when in always, if you can find a coach, get a coach, if you can find a coach that you trust and, um, it works for financial and, um, time schedule reasons. Yes. That's the answer. Yes. Get a coach. Um, if a coach is unavailable, um, then you need to get a programming. We know this is a, um, a big need in, um, for a lot of our athletes. I have something exciting coming this summer. Mm, nice. Um, I think people can read between the lines of what that is going to be. Um, so if you were to ask this in six months, uh, we've actually been building up for the last year. Um, and if you were to ask me in six months, I'd say, here you go, click yeah. on this. Um, otherwise for now, I honestly, I don't have a good answer and that's why we're creating something. Love it. Would a games athlete get more benefit from, I like this question. Would a games athlete get more benefit from having you coach them, but use somebody else's programming or use your programming, but work with another coach? 
Okay, so I'm going to have to assume that um, um, it's like the, the, the alternative is subpar, is below average, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that kind of what they're asking? Or is it like uh, you, me working with um, – because that's the way I interpret it. Is it me working with an athlete and they have great programming? Mm-hmm. Or me – or them following my programming with a great coach? Yeah, that's – Which yeah. it is. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. Because I, 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 it, change, it changes my answer. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 again, I, I default to the coach. I yep. d- default to the great coach. Whatever, yep. whatever the alternative is for the great coach, um, coaching is above programming. Mm, that's that's a great answer right there. How does a good leader or box owner uh, balance their creativity with the need to make decisions? The owner of my gym is great at brainstorming and always has a quote unquote, what about this or that mindset. But sometimes it can lead to nothing, uh, nothing actually being decided or done. Should this person be delegating the creativity or de- decision making or what? Oh, cool. Okay. So, um, awesome that you have this person on your team or leading the organization. This person is a visionary. Mm -hmm. Visionaries have tons of good ideas. They're the ones that are going to take your company to the moon without them. You are just kind of average and you're just chunking along. Uh, visionaries change the world. This person sounds like they're a visionary. You are so lucky to be, um, to be in business with them. Most visionaries are not good at executing. So they need somebody to run and take their um, decisions and put them into action. That's actually way, way more valuable than the ideas because ideas are nothing. They're pixie dust. They're imaginary. They're um, they're, they just float around in the universe. And until you grab one and put it into action, it does literally nothing. And it might actually do more harm than good because it shows up in the form of a distraction. So what this person needs is what we call is an integrator. Mm -hmm. Think of it as a CEO. It's a person that actually runs the day to day and takes these ideas and puts them into execution. This is so common in entrepreneurial businesses. There is the person with all the great ideas. This is the role I play. I am the ideas guy. I have, I, I, I'm pretty confident. I have an idea how to change the world. Um, you ask me to put that into day to day action and I get so frustrated. I hate that part of it. Um, so we have somebody that does that. We call that person our CEO. Um, you you also say like, if you want other words for this, I I can be the, uh, I'll be the chairman of the board. Um, and they are the, um, president. Um, they are the integrator. They are the executor. They are the one running. And you need both those roles in your business. Um, I'm not going to say one is more valuable than the other, but it's super, super common um, for early stage startups and entrepreneurial businesses for the visionary to play the integrator role and um, businesses suffer because of it. Yeah. So you need to have somebody, yes, delegate, but you're not delegating the um, – the ideas you are delegating though the decision making which this person said which is pretty mm. cool yep. the visionary doesn't make the decisions which yep. is hard for someone like me to swallow yeah. Yeah. i lay out the ideas and the other person who has their feet on the ground and a pulse on the business goes no we cannot do that right now yep yep yeah <laughs> that's another conversation maybe is the how you've transitioned into that role because i'd love to i'd love to learn more about what you're learning yeah um, and some of the challenges and some of the benefits of that shift that I think you've made in the last, let's just call it last month or so, um, maybe two months at this point. Okay. Last question we've got today, two minute drill. What do you see as a common obstacle for most athletes? I'm going to go ahead and say competitive athletes. Yep. I'm going to infer. Mindset period done like mindset. Now it doesn't show up as mindset, but it is, mm. it shows up as, um, distractions. Hmm. It shows up as um, lack of motivation. It shows up as um, frustration. It shows up as excuses. It shows up as um, lack of commitment, but it's all mindset. Mm -hmm. It shows up as lack of performance, Hmm. lack of gains, but it's all mindset. Um, I'll throw another one out there just to throw like another like little teaser um, that people can chew on. Um, another one is their environment. Mm-hmm. Who they're like who, who they're around. around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Got it. Love it. I'm my friend. That I think was the most successful two minute drill we've ever done, at Ooh. least as it relates to I just the gotta rules. Keep talking fast. 
uh, it relates to the rules of too many and, girls. And not go on these like long, I, I just <laughs> want to keep talking about it. So I, in my mind, it goes environment, talk about environment. <laughs> but then we're at minutes four, five, and six. Yeah, that's right. All right, my friend. Thank you. That was that was um, that was great. Thank you to everybody who sends us questions. If you want to send us a question for a future two minute drill, you can find me on Instagram at ps cummings. Drop me a DM, and I promise you, I will read it, even if it takes me a month. Um, and uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll see you guys next week on another episode of Chasing Excellence. You can get every episode of Chasing Excellence wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for listening.